this is the report that everybody seems to be waiting for. Although now, you know, the inflation numbers seem to be of elevated importance because people are paying attention to them. But for many, many years, and still including today, it's this report, which is the granddaddy of the monthly reports. Everybody waits for this number. And I'm not even sure why, because to me, it's pretty insignificant given how completely unreliable these numbers now are. I mean, everybody is looking for a strong report as evidence that the economy is good. And so somehow we keep manufacturing these strong jobs reports. In fact, the report that we got on Friday was the 13th consecutive beat where the number of jobs created exceeded what Wall Street expected. Now, what are the odds of that? 13 times in a row? I mean, you're going to have a few misses in there just by pure chance. I mean, how could the expectation be too low every single time? I mean, it seems more likely that the government knows what the number is and they just want to beat it. And so they end up doing it. I'm a little skeptical of a streak that goes on for 13 consecutive months, especially given how weak the overall economy is. Because what's happened during those 13 months? Well, the Fed has taken interest rates from zero to five and a quarter. Seems that that would be a difficult environment for job creation. Also, look at all the layoffs that we're getting. I mean, tech companies are laying everybody off. Banks are laying off. In fact, we even got on Thursday, before we got this non-farm payroll number, we got the number of job cuts from Challenger. And it was another pretty big month. It wasn't quite as big as last month. They reported 89,703 job cuts. This month, it was 66,995. But that's still a lot of cuts. These are much bigger numbers. And it stands to reason that companies would be laying off workers. I mean, now they're laying off workers because of AI. But before that, they were just laying them off because their businesses are collapsing because their costs are rising and interest rates are rising and consumers are struggling. Companies have run out of money. Uh, and so they're having to cut their workforce just to reduce their cash burn. So it would make sense, right, that we wouldn't have a lot of jobs, yet we keep coming out with these strong reports. So first of all, here is what the government reported for April. So the expectation was 178,000 jobs, and that would have been less than the 236,000 jobs that were reported for March. We came out with 253,000. So a solid beat. In fact, the range of expectations went from 140,000 to 200,000. So we came out above the high end. But there was one wrinkle, nobody seemed to talk about it, but there was a downward revision from March from 236,000 all the way down to 165,000. It was basically a push. I think if you take the two months combined and you net out the revisions, it was only a beat of 2,000 jobs. But nobody really talked about the downward revisions to March. It was all the beat from, from April. Now, of course, I don't really remember what the expectation was for March that the government beat. But I don't know, maybe 165 wouldn't have been a beat. So maybe this isn't 13 in a row if you go back and look at the revisions. But any number that's subject to that kind of wow revision, again, Wall Street puts a lot more stock in this number than they should. The unemployment rate fell from 3.6 to 3.4. Private payrolls also beat, but again, subject to a similar downward revision. They were looking for 153,000. The government reported 230,000, but the 189,000 that they originally reported last month was revised down to 123,000. So that was a big number. Same thing on manufacturing. They were looking for no new manufacturing jobs created. Instead, they created 11,000. But last month's loss of 1,000 was revised to a loss of 8,000. So almost a push. The uh, labor force participation rate stayed steady at 62.6. 
One number that did beat, which should have been a negative for the markets, was average hourly earnings. They jumped from 0.3 to 0.5, and the year-over-year -year increase in average hourly earnings went from 4.2 to 4.4. So these were hotter numbers, and the market is very sensitive to anything that looks stronger or looks like higher inflation. The bond market reacted as it had been, right? Bond prices sold off, yields rose, Gold did what it always does when we get stronger economic data, and they define hotter inflation as stronger data, which doesn't even make any sense. But gold dropped as soon as the number came out. Gold sold off by 40 bucks, but it was near a record high on Thursday. Gold was trading above 2,050 when this stronger than expected number came out, and gold immediately tanked by 40 bucks. It closed down about $30, still well above uh, 2000 I think we're trading about up a buck right now in early trading on Sunday night. Gold's about 2020 And even though gold stocks initially got clobbered on the $40 drop in the price of gold, by the end of the day, they were broadly unchanged. I mean, some of the stocks actually finished positive on the day. So to me, with gold down 30 bucks and gold stocks flat to positive or down just a little, Again, that's showing me that 2000s is the support and gold stock traders are now starting to recognize that. In fact, this time we couldn't even get below 2000. We had been trading below 2000 on the sell-offs, but on this $40 sell-off, we couldn't even get to 2000. That's how strong the market is. The one market that seemed to act different than it had been acting was the stock market. The Dow Jones, despite this strong economic data. Remember, uh, good news is supposed to be bad news for stocks and bad news is good news. This jobs report was taken by Wall Street as good news and it had within it you know, bad news on inflation, meaning bigger numbers, yet the Dow was up 546 points. That's a big move. And in fact, the NASDAQ on a percentage basis was up even bigger. I think the NASDAQ was up 2% and the Russell 2000 up about 2.4%. So all these equities rose. And in fact, the riskiest ex equities rose even more. I think the Kathy Wood uh, ARK Innovation ETF was up about 4.5%. Now maybe shorts covered, maybe that's what was going on. We had this stronger than expected economic news that should have been bad for stocks. Instead, stock ra stocks rallied anyway. I still think that we're going to see more downside in the stock market because my take, and I gave this to everybody on the last podcast on Wednesday following the Powell press conference, where Powell basically threw cold water on the idea that the Fed has paused, that we're finished uh, with the rate hikes. And then he went even further by saying the expectation that we're going to cut rates is wrong. 